Hi, welcome to this tutorial on adding and subtracting algebraic fractions. Now, to do a sum like this, what we need to do is to be able to do it with normal numbers, normal fractions, something like this. So what I'm going to do is to show you or remind you again how we add and subtract normal fractions because the principles are exactly the same. Now here in this example we've got a half plus two thirds take away a quarter. So if I was doing that what I'd want to do is change them into the same fraction. And what we do is we choose preferably a number, the lowest number that the denominators 2, 3 and 4 go into. And the lowest number, the LCM of 2, 3 and 4 is going to be 12. We can change them into twelfths. So how do we do that? Well, if we take the first fraction, a half, we know that if we times a half by 1, it's going to remain obviously as a half. But it's how we times it by 1. And if we're going to make it into twelfths, then all I need to do is to change that 1 into 6 over 6. 6 over 6 is 1. And now we've got 1 times 6 is 6 over 2 6 is a 12. 6 twelfths. Half is the same as 6 twelfths. And if we do it for the second fraction, the two thirds. We take our two thirds. It's the same as timesing it by one, but to get it to into twelfths, that one can be regarded as being four over four. So we end up with eight twelfths. And for the last fraction, minus a quarter, again, we could times it by one, but we don't want to have that one as one we want to select 3 over 3. So we get 3 twelfths. Now normally I wouldn't write this out. What I would normally do is go from here straight into this next line. And it would just be 12. 12 on the bottom here saying that I'm selecting 12 as the lowest common multiple of 2, 3 and 4. And then what I would say is, what do I multiply 2 by to get 12? And it's clearly 6. This 6 here. And so I need to multiply the top by 6. So I'd have 1 times the 6. OK? And if I look at my 2 thirds, I'd say, what do I multiply 3 by to get 12? And it would be 4, like the 4 here. And I'd need to multiply the top by 4. So I'd get plus 2 times the 4. Similarly, when I get to this term, it's going to be a minus. What do I multiply 4 by to get 12? It's 3. So I need to do 1 times 3. And so clearly, if you work this out, you've got 6 plus 8, which is 14. Take away 3, which is 11. So you end up with 11 twelfths. So it's this idea then that I'm going to use for doing something like this. Now we've got 1 over x minus 2 over x minus 3 plus 4 over x plus 1. Instead of writing an equals though, you should write an identical sign. Three lines, OK? And what I would normally do is immediately write my lowest common multiple in here. But for the moment, I won't do that, OK? I'll do it just down on this line here. We'll step backwards for a moment and see what we would have. Well, the lowest common multiple of x, x minus 3 and x plus 1, because none of these is a factor of the other, tends, turns out to be x times x minus 3 times x plus 1. OK, so again, using the same principle as I used up here, I would essentially say, what do I multiply x by to give me this denominator? And it would be x minus 3 times x plus 1. So I would do 1 multiplied by x minus 3 times x plus 1. I would also take now the second term, 
the denominator is x minus 3 and I'd say what do I multiply x minus 3 by to give me this denominator and it would be the x and the x plus 1. So I'd write minus 2, that's that 2 there, times the x and also times the x plus 1. And when I get to this term I would say again what do I multiply x plus 1 by to give me this denominator and it would be x times x minus 3. So I would write 4 times the x times the x minus 3. And there you have it. Okay. But just to run through why this is so, just one more time. Okay. We've got our 1 over x for the first fraction. We're t trying to turn it into this fraction with this denominator here. So I need to times the x by x minus 3 and x plus 1. But I need to do the same to the top so that I'm ending up multiplying my fraction by essentially 1 because these cancel. So I end up with 1 over x times 1 which is 1 over x. All right? But you can see this is very time consuming. I'll just fill it in though just for the moment. We've got the next term minus 2 over x minus 3. I can times this by 1 but how do I times it by 1? I times it by the same thing over the same thing and in this case it would have to be that x and that x plus 1. x and x plus 1 on the bottom and x and x plus 1 on the top. So that is timesing essentially this fraction by 1 but it gives us the same denominator. And lastly for the last term 4 over x plus 1 would have to be multiplied top and bottom by the same thing so that it's really essentially 1 and in this case it would be x and the x plus 1. So we would have x and x plus 1 on the bottom and on the top we'd have to do the same thing x and x plus 1. So I hope you can see then how we get to this line from this line here. As I say I wouldn't normally write this line in. I would just literally go from here straight into this one. Okay, all we need to do now is just simplify the top. So this is identical to, well we can expand these brackets out. We're going to have x squared. We're going to have an x minus a 3x which is minus 2x. And minus 3 times 1 is minus 3. When it comes down to this term we got minus 2x times the x plus 1 so that's going to give minus 2x squared and minus 2x. Take care with those minuses there and when we get to this term it's going to be plus 4x squared and then minus 12x. Okay never expand the bottom okay you've got one term here it's factorized so always a good idea just to have that as simple as possible so never expand it just leave it in its factorized version. All we need to do now is just group up the terms on the top we got the x squared terms we've got x squared plus that 4x squared is 5x squared minus the 2x squared so that's going to be 3x squared and then as for the x's, minus 2x minus another 2x minus 4x minus the 12x there is minus 16x. And then the constant on the end is minus 3. All divided by then x bracket x minus 3 and x plus 1. Okay. Always check to see whether the numerator, the top of the fraction, factorizes because if it did and it then had any common factors with the bottom, you might be able to cancel those out. Okay, but in this case, the quadratic expression on the top here doesn't factorize, so it's just left like that. Okay, well, let's just take you through another one. Okay, and I'm going to this time try and uh, speed up the pace of it. Okay, let's say that we had something like this. 3x over x minus 2 and say minus 5 over x minus 1. Now 
when you get ones like this, okay, what we've got is we can see that there's no common factors between x minus 2 and x minus 1. So the denominator is going to be simply x minus 2 times x minus 1. So what I would say is I want to change this fraction then into a fraction with this denominator. So what do I need to multiply x minus 2 by to give me this denominator? Well, it's going to be x minus 1. So I just times the 3x with the x minus 1. When it comes to this fraction, we've got a denominator of x minus 1. I want to change it into this denominator. So what do I multiply x minus 1 by to give me this denominator? Well, it's got to be x minus 2. So I need to times the top by the same value, x minus 2. So we have 5 bracket x minus 2. OK, so all I need to do now is just simplify this. And we have 3x squared minus 3x. Be careful on this minus when you multiply it through. You've got minus 5x and we've got plus 10. Again, don't multiply out the denominator. Just leave it as x minus 2 times x minus 1. Simplify the top here and you've got 3x squared minus 8x plus 10 all divided by x minus 2 and x minus 1. OK, so there you go. Basically, that's how you do addition and subtraction of algebraic fractions. Now, I purposely left this one, by the way, to the end. You'll notice it's got two terms, OK, whereas this one had three terms in it. Now, you often find a lot of students falling into a very common trap. They quite often think that when you add and subtract fractions, all you've got to do is just do 3x times this value here, x minus 1, and then minus, in this case, 5 times x minus 2. Now, admittedly, it did come out like that on the top here. They call it kind of like cross-multiplying or whatever. OK, I hate that expression. You don't want to slip into that mode. Well, I don't think you want to slip into that mode because you're not doing that kind of thing up here. You're not doing like... 2 times x and 1 times x minus 3. You can see it's totally different. Okay, So try not to slip into that way of thinking that all you have to do is just do 3x times x minus 1 and minus 5 times the x minus 2. Think of it as that you're trying to turn the fractions into the same fraction with the lowest common denominator and what you're doing is seeing what do you have to multiply the denominator by to get this particular denominator. Okay? You're timesing top and bottom essentially by the same fraction. Okay, so it's always one. Okay, I'm sorry to go on about it, but as I say, I do see so many mistakes made by thinking the wrong way. Okay, Right, well that brings us now to the end of uh, this tutorial.